Hi, my name is Neil Mueller with Google Cloud Platform. We're here as part of the On Air Cloud series. It's a series of live webinars for Google Cloud. Um, today we're hosting two webinars. Um, my webinar on pricing, and then Sergey and team will join me after five minutes, five minutes when I'm finished, uh, to talk about streaming analytics. Also, next month, something to look forward to, we'll be talking about security and IT development tools. Okay, without further ado, let's talk about customer-friendly GCP pricing. I've got a lot of ground to cover today, um, but let me spend a few minutes on why we're here. Uh, we're here because customers are really excited about the cloud, but unfortunately, a number of customers feel like they're, they're wasting money. Now, fortunately, most of these cloud customers are not ours, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But according to RightScale, which is a third-party analyst firm, they wrote a report called The State of the Cloud in 2017. And they said that 45% of their cloud spend was wasted. Uh, this is self-reported waste, um, so you want to believe it. On the left-hand side, you see um, the cause of a lot of this waste. We've got inflexible three-year VM leases that are provided by other cloud providers. Um, inflexible VM configurations where you have to buy a certain amount of RAM to get a certain amount of CPU. Also, something um, uh, not on our cloud, but on every other cloud. Um, and per hour billing, uh, as opposed to what we have in, here in GCP, which is per minute billing. Um, so customers are feeling like they're wasting a lot of money on the cloud, at the same time that they're saving a lot of money because the cloud is uh, much less expensive than on-prem alternatives. Um, we're here to give you the best of both worlds, to give you a cloud that is exactly what you expected to pay for um, with customer-friendly pricing models that you can really easily understand. So this is a summary slide. We'll come to it at the very end also. Um, if you look on the left, we've got other cloud providers. And let's consider that a baseline of 100%, what you would expect to pay. Um, on the right-hand side, we've got the discounts, the discount innovations that we have here at GCP, and we'll talk through each of those. So an average of 24% savings is from sustained use discounts. Um, this is very similar to uh, the card that you get when you go to your um, favorite sandwich shop, and if you buy 10 sandwiches, uh, they give you one for free. Sustained use discount. When you, lose, when you use a lot of GCP, um, you save a lot on GCP. 21% uh, list price differences. This is just the rack rate of our compute. If you look at the, the, the list price, we are on average 20% less than other cloud providers. And I'll talk to you a bit more in a few minutes about why that's the case. 15% uh, average savings from right-sizing recommendations. We recommend um, uh, within the cloud console, if you're using too much or too little compute, we recommend that you can either save money or that you should beef up, beef up, beef up that server um, to make it more um, uh, performant. Uh, on average, if you add those numbers together, you get a 60% average discount um, when you compare us to other clouds. Um, that's a big discount. All right, let's talk about all of our pricing innovations. Um, this slide is very much a table of contents for my talk. We're going to start in the upper left and work our way down to the lower right. So let's talk about um, uh, list price advantages. I've talked to you about how we get a 21% average list price reduction compared to other clouds. Uh, sustained use discounts, um, the lunch counter uh, card, uh, up to 24% average savings. Committed use discounts, up to 57% savings when you buy uh, uh, instances in advance, when you commit to their use. Uh, per minute billing, up to 38% savings when you uh, pay per minute and not per hour. Custom machine types, up to 19% savings, because you don't have to, if you need a lot of RAM, and, but not a lot of uh, CPU, uh, you can only pay for exactly what you want. Uh, we call that custom machine types. Right sizing recommendations, 15% average savings. Um, we give you recommendations on uh, whether you, um, you need more CPU or more RAM. Preemptible VM instances, uh, we call these PVMs. And we give you uh, an average 18% savings on workloads that can be interrupted. Network service tiers, our newest edition, we just launched it last week. It allows you to either pick performance or cost savings when you, uh, when you buy your network from us. Cold line, archival storage at the speed of tape and the, um, uh, the speed of disk and the cost of tape. And uh, lastly, uh, support. We offer you the opportunity to pay per user per month as opposed to a flat uh, percentage fee uh, uplift on your, on your cloud cost. Okay. Let's talk about why GCP is the perennial price leader. Well, it has a lot to do with our volume. Uh, Google has a lot of infrastructure. You've probably used YouTube and Google Search. Um, you may have also used Google Cloud Platform. 
Um, we are a very large technology company with a lot of infrastructure. Um, we buy in bulk, we purpose build much of our infrastructure. We spent more last year than any other cloud provider, uh, 10.9 billion in CapEx in 2016. Google's vast scale means that we can offer you more for less. We also are smart about how we build our infrastructure. On average, a Google data center uses 50% less energy than a typical data center. Our PUE, which is a measure of our, of our efficiency, our power usage effectiveness, is 1.12, lower than any other public cloud provider. This means that we use less energy um, than average. If you look at the global average of the largest data centers in the world, they're 1.7. Now what this means is that about 40% of the average energy in a, in a data center is wasted to cooling or heating or just general loss. By comparison, about 10% of the energy in a Google data center is wasted, meaning 90% of the energy that we buy uh, goes to providing you cloud services. We're more efficient when we run our data centers and we can pass the savings on to you. We're also uh, more efficient because we deploy very interesting technologies like machine learning. You may have seen the article written about DeepMind who applied some of their technology to our data center. And if you look on this graph right here, time is on the x-axis. On the y-axis is PUE, this power use effectiveness ratio that I told you about. Um, the closer you are to one, uh, the better. Um, Google is closer to one than other average data centers. And when we deploy DeepMind's AI in our data center, it reduced cooling by 40%. So you can imagine what this ML looks like is we've got Let's take, for example, we've got like 10 dials, and each dial has 10, um, 10 positions on it. That's 10 to the 10th power, or 10 million. Um, that's a lot of instances to calculate through, which is exactly what DeepMind is calculating through, and finding the exact right middle ground where we can safely operate our data centers and also simultaneously reduce cooling. This allowed us to reduce the cooling bill by 40%. Um, we're not the only one noticing. Uh, Greenpeace uh, gave us an A. Um, other cloud providers in the space uh, didn't get an A. Uh, we earned this as a result of energy transparency, committing to being 100% renewable by 2017, um, and um, our green advocacy that we do. We think our data centers are beautiful inside and outside. In fact, this is one of our murals that we have. Uh, if you send me a tweet and you're the first person to send it to me, I'll send you a $25 Starbucks gift card. Um, this is part of our mural project. Um, we paint many of our data centers um, with murals. Um, just send me the state name via Twitter and I'll send you that gift card. Um, this is a very large data center. All right, let's talk about sustained use discounts. This is the uh, sandwich card that I talked to you about. So if this is an, uh, on, on the x-axis here, we have the monthly average usage. And so if you use 100% uh, of this VM for the entire month, you can get 30% uh, uh, savings. Um, we're seeing our customers experiencing an average of 24% average savings because many of our customers use that VM for the entire month. In other words, they're getting a lot of free sandwiches. What Sustain Use provides is if you use us more, we will give you a lower price. This is automatic. There's no upfront payments required. There's no lock-in and there's no complex decision making. Um, you don't even have to remember the sandwich card um, for us to give you the discount. So it really is just that easy. You might be wondering, um, we use terms like customer friendly pricing, but are we really that friendly when we're doing the calculation of sustained use discounts? I can tell you, yes, we are. If you look at the graph on the lower left, um, you can imagine in the actual use case where you've got a whole bunch of VMs and a whole bunch of projects uh, across, a, um, across um, your, your entire organization. What we could, what we could do is we could um, uh, not be friendly about it and we could calculate your actual usage and say that you hadn't used a single VM the entire month. Um, but that's not how we calculate it. What we do is we have this, this technique that we call inferred instances. Where if you look in the middle, where we group them, we group all of the instance usage together, and then on the far right, we compute a discount based on that. So we, we put them together in a way uh, um, that looks like a very successful Tetris game, which gives you the maximum possible sustained use discount. Truly customer-friendly pricing. Okay, let's talk about CUD, committed use discount. What this, what this is, is when you buy cores and memory in bulk, you can either select to use a one-year or a three-year commitment, and you can change your machine types uh, at any time. If you do this with us for one year or for three years, we'll give you up to a 57% discount. Big discount. So what you're doing here is you're buying cores and memory in bulk. 
if you buy it for one year, it's a 37% savings. If you buy it for three years, it's a 57% savings. If you compare this to other similar offerings in the cloud space, for example, AWS's reserved instances, um, this is again a report from a company called RightScale. They're a third party advisory firm out there. And this is a report that they did very recently in March when we released committed use discounts. Um, we are the blue um, block. Uh, in this case, lower is better because we're talking about price and costs. So because of the rigid rigidity of the AWS RIs and the flexibility of the committed use discounts, the realized benefit for you uh, is much higher. Uh, in this case, uh, the costs are much lower. Okay, um, let's get into a bit more detail about committed use discounts. Um, like I said, these are available in one and three year. Um, you commit to a certain number of vCPUs and a certain amount of memory. This is valid for any Google Cloud uh, Compute Engine or GKE non-shared core VMs. Um, and it's ideal for predictable steady state workloads. Um, I said that it's a committed use on CPU and also memory. Um, there are very flexible limits on the ratio between memory and CPU. So anything from 0.9 gigabits of RAM up to 6.5 gigabits of RAM per CPU, inclusive of those two numbers, is an appropriate ratio. So if you've got a very memory intensive application that doesn't require much CPU, committed use discounts is, is still gonna be good for you. Uh, the discounts apply to aggregate regional usage, for example, all of your, res all of your usage in Iowa or Oregon or London. Okay, this is a summary slide talking about committed use discounts. What I want to highlight here is the very far right block, which says that in order to attain these deep discounts without upfront payment, in order to, you can attain these deep discounts without upfront payments at all, because we don't require you to do any upfront payments. This is very different from um, other reserve instance type uh, structures that you see there in the cloud. Per minute billing. Okay, so. On GCP, you only pay for what you use. So for example, if you're using a VM for only 11 minutes, you're gonna pay for 11 minutes, not 60 minutes. This is a big differentiator with other, from other cloud providers. Let's walk through a short example. So on the right here, you see that if you're using the, the, the virtual machine for between 12 and 25 minutes, your average savings is up to 38%. Custom machine types. If you go with another cloud provider, you will be dictated a certain amount of CPU and memory. And if you need more CPU or less CPU, uh, you have to pay for the stuff that you don't use. So right here on the x-axis, you've got a series of machines, and the gray would be waste. In this case, on GCP, the, the waste would be much, much less. On average, we're seeing customers save up to 19% um, when they use uh, custom machine types. This is a screenshot that I took from the user interface. Um, we've got these dials where you can dial up the amount of cores uh, or the amount of memory that you want. And we did the math and it turns out that th there's 695 different compute types. Um, if you compare that to other cloud providers, we have 110 more compute types than they do. So it really is, uh, you know, you get exactly what you want and, and nothing more. Right sizing recommendations. This is very similar to custom machine types. What this looks like in the user interface is a recommendation where it says, hey, you're using a bit more instance compute than um, you have purchased. Would you like to upgrade? Or in more cases than that, um, you have purchased an instance type that is larger than you need and you're paying for something that you're not using. Would you like to save yourself a little money? And all you have to do is click the button right here to either dismiss all of those recommendations or to learn more and with one click you can activate them. Uh, it's the opposite of requiring you to plan in advance for demand that you can't possibly forecast. 25% uh, of, uh, of monitored instances get a recommendation on average, so that's a lot. It'll be a good portion of your instances. Now you can very easily dismiss these or, or take action. Uh, uh, recommendations take, um, uh, take a look at CPU and memory. Um, on average, we're seeing 60% of those recommendations offering to save you money and 40% offering to uh, increase your instance size, to get, ask, suggest that you get a, big, a beefier instance because you're getting a more traffic than you, than you may have expected. Um, if you use Stackdriver, um, the, the, um, the granularity of these recommendations uh, improves quite a bit. 
Let's talk about preemptible machine types. Preemptible machine types are very good for workloads uh, such as batch or scientific, um, uh, predictable workloads that you don't think are going to go down. They're exactly like regular VMs, um, except for they are 80% less expensive. Um, they can run for a maximum of 24 hours, at which time um, they'll be shut down. Um, you can terminate them earlier uh, if you like. Um, and it offers predictable billing compared to other cloud providers that have similar structures like this, but they're based on marketplaces, um, where you would have to hire somebody to go into that marketplace and understand um, the float price of that uh, machine instance, whereas here it's just a flat 80% um, off. So much easier to forecast. We view this as you know, customer-friendly pricing. Like I said, they're very good for um, various kinds of workloads that you know um, might be able to be interrupted. Um, for example, batch jobs, pipeline builds, after hours processing, big data workloads, analytics, media encoding, scientific work, financial modeling, dev test, crawling, uh, that kind of workloads. Um, what is most amazing about PVMs is how easy they are to deploy. Um, I mentioned with other um, types of um, structures like this from other cloud providers, you might need to hire somebody to go in there and understand the marketplace dynamics of their instance, of their um, interruptible instances, not with ours. Um, they are a flat 80% um, price reduction, and you can either activate it using this code right here that I've got on the screen, um, or in the cloud console with a point and click. Customers love these. Um, for example, uh, Mark Johnson, the founder of Descartes Labs, has been able to predict corn yield uh, more accurately than the United States Department of Agriculture, all using PVMs. So he's benefiting from GCP at 80% the cost um, um, and producing incredible output for his customers. Network service tiers. Uh, last week, we became the first major public cloud to offer a tiered cloud network. What this means for you is that you can either um, choose to pick performance, which we call the premium tier, think premium gasoline. Um, if you pick the premium tier, it is on average 70% faster than other cloud networks. Um, it is 14 to 80% more expensive than other competing clouds, and so the ratio of 18% you know, more for 70% more power, that's a, that's a very good ratio. We feel like it's a good um, value for your money. Um, if you pick premium, you're riding on the Google network, which is a non-circuitous, direct, private, dedicated path from your cloud workloads to your end customers, egressing out of a pop very near to your end customers. If you choose standard, um, you'll benefit from a 6 to 9% savings over other competing clouds. Um, standard network uses the public internet, which is very similar to what other public clouds uh, will provide you. Um, this is often not a direct path. Um, it suffers from lower security, lower reliability, but it, um, it's a very good value for the money. Let's talk about storage. Uh, on this graph, on the x-axis you see the retrieval frequency. So on the left, um, you've got Glacier, um, an AWS product that offers re uh, retrieval frequency of three to five hours. It is very close to the same price as GCS Coldline, which offers millisecond access time. We also offer Nearline, Regional, and GCS Multi-Regional. The reason we've um, put their storage options next to ours is what you'll notice is ours are always below theirs. Um, which means that we are less expensive for the retrieval time uh, required. Um, so we think that our storage is going to be a better value for online data, whether it's hot or cold, whether you've got millisecond access time um, that you need globally reliable or, or less. Uh, Coldline is a highly available, affordable solution for backup archival and disaster recovery. It really is incredible. Um, we offer you the um, the speed of uh, disk at the cost of tape. But you might be asking yourself, how am I going to get all my data up into the cloud? Well, for that, we just launched something about last month called the Transfer Appliance. This is a physical appliance that we rent you for a window of time. You load your data onto it, and then you send it back to us using a courier. Um, the capacity for this is up to one petabit compressed. It's the largest uh, transfer appliance in the cloud. Uh, because a lot of our customers are moving a lot of data uh, to us and we wanted to give them uh, as much capacity as we possibly could. Uh, the transfer appliance is all about speed. 
In this animation, what you're seeing is how fast it would take a transfer appliance to be shipped out to you, for you to fill it up, and for you to send it back to us, and us to load it into Google Cloud Storage. On average, 43 days. If you compare that over a typical network, which is 100 megabits per second, it is going to take a lot longer than 43 days. Um, as you can see, it'll take multiple years, like more than three years. Let's talk about what we're doing for support. Support hasn't evolved. Um, what we are doing to evolve it is we're offering role-based support. What this means is that you pay a flat price per user per month as opposed to uh, a percentage fee uplift on your cloud usage. So you might be accustomed to paying uh, a certain percentage like 10 to 20 to 30 percent uplift on your cloud usage. Um, we are evolving that to this new method where you pay uh, a flat fee per user per month. So let's take an example. Um, let's say that you're a development shop with 10 engineers. Um, that would be 10 uh, engineers multiplied by $100 per user per month multiplied by 12. So that's $12,000 in annual support um, for this development shop, um, which is likely much, much less and certainly much, much more predictable um, than if you were to pay a flat percentage fee um, on, your, on your cloud bill. It also is a lot closer to getting a value for your money because we're charging you per engineer as opposed to charging you a percentage uplift. Um, the old model we call account-based. The new model we call role-based. Account-based, you're accustomed to long-term contracts, standardized tiers, and like I said, percentage-based uplift on your cloud bill. With role-based, you've got a very flexible environment that you can change month to month. Um, no commitments, very customizable configurations. You tell us how many users you, you want. Um, uh, and it's very predictable because you know how many users you're buying. This is coming very soon, uh, and we're incredibly excited about it. It offers development support, production support, and also support for your business critical apps. All right, let's talk about some key takeaways. Um, if we start in the upper left, we talked about why Google was a perennial price leader. We operated at a vast scale, and we passed those benefits on to you. On average, we're 20% less than other cloud providers, just the rack rate. Sustained use discounts, just like when you go into a sandwich shop. This is up to 24% average savings. Committed use discounts. If you are able to plan ahead and know that you're going to use us, we don't make you pay up front, but we offer you up to 57% savings for a three-year contract. Per minute billing, up to 38% savings by paying by the minute as opposed to paying by the hour. The analogy I gave, the example I gave was uh, uh, using 11 minutes and paying for 60. Very frustrating. We don't consider that customer friendly pricing and so we don't make you do it. Custom machine types. Up to 19% average savings when you pick any configuration of CPU and, and RAM. Right sizing recommendations. 15% average savings by auto-scaling compute around your needs. We give you these recommendations. 60% of the time, they're to reduce the size of the workload, offering you a savings. 40% of the time, on average, um, they're for you to beef up your instance and save you downtime. Preemptible VM instances. Up to 80% savings, and this is a flat fee, not based on a marketplace. Up to 80% savings on workloads that can be interrupted, like batch jobs or crawling or scientific work. Network service tiers, our newest member to this list. Um, where you can pick performance and get 70% higher performance than the average cloud provider, or savings and save 9% compared to other clouds. Cold line, archival storage, uh, um, and the transfer appliance, which allows you to move lots of data to the cloud very quickly. Uh, support, we are evolving support and very excited about it. With role-based support, customers pay a flat monthly fee per user per engineer. Here's that graph again. Let's talk about um, where, we've, where we've come. So another cloud provider on the left will charge you a baseline of 100%. Um, you can experience uh, an average of 60% savings for compute workloads on GCP. 24% uh, is coming from sustained use discounts, 21% from list price dis discounts, 15% from right size and recommendations. Big benefits for you. Customers are picking GCP in part because of our customer-friendly pricing, but also for a lot of other reasons. 
Um, on the left, we offer you true cloud economics. That's all about the pricing. We've walked through a number of examples where we provide you very transparent, uh, friendly pricing structures that you can, without taking a lot of time, uh, take advantage of. Most of these you, you take advantage of um, just by using the system at all. You don't have to plan ahead. Um, we offer you future-proof infrastructure where you can scale your business smoothly and responsibly. For example, we're the first cloud to offer Silver Lake, Intel chips, uh, and you didn't have to plan for that. You didn't have to um, you know, buy them a couple of years ago. You can buy them um, the second that you want them, and then the second you stop wanting to use them, um, you can stop paying for them. Um, big advantages um, that you get from using the cloud. Um, you can also get access to incredible innovation. Um, Google is known for our artificial intelligence and machine learning. We give you access to uh, many of our uh, APIs, including Vision API, Natural Language API, BigQuery. Uh, you can use these to really um, spark off a lot of innovation at your company. And Google-grade security. Um, we offer multiple layers of security so that you can control uh, your cloud from chip to chiller. Okay, with that, I think I've been told that we've got a couple of questions that I probably should help answer. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I can see on my screen here that we've got five questions to answer. Um, the first one is, where did the idea for sustained use discounts come from? Uh, it predates me here at Google. Uh, I came up with a lunch counter example because I eat sandwiches. And uh, when I buy 10 of them, uh, I get a free sandwich. And it sounds a lot like sustained use discounts. Um, the big difference between sustained use discounts and uh, the lunch counter is that I'm always forgetting my little card and losing it. And that never happens because we keep track of it for you. Uh, question two. Are GCP pricing innovations only for compute? Uh, many of them are for compute. Uh, right sizing recommendations, uh, sustained use discount, committed use discount, those are for compute. Um, however, many of them are not. For example, cold line, where we offer you um, the speed of disk at the cost of tape, um, is very innovative and is a storage innovation, um, not a computer innovation. Uh, network service tiers uh, also is the opportunity for you to um, experience 70% faster networks than the average cloud provider or 9% uh, lower costs. Um, and that's a networking uh, innovation. Question number three, can I change my instance sizes and still receive committed use discounts? Yes, unlike other cloud providers that offer you um, committed use discount structures that are inflexible, uh, ours are flexible. So you buy a certain amount of CPU and a certain amount of memory and within that bundle, that basket, you can change exactly the kind of VM configurations that you want um, from minute to minute, day to day, um, within, that, within that month, uh, within that year, whether it's a one year or a three year uh, committed use discount. Question four, what is the difference between SUDs and CUDs? Uh, sustained use discount, let's see if I can think of a funny analogy. Um, sustained use discount is when you go to the lunch counter and they give you one of those cards um, and if you eat 10 of those sandwiches they give you a free sandwich. Committed use discounts is when you go to the car wash and you say I want to buy 10 car washes and I'm going to buy them right now and then I'm going to use them over the next uh, one year or three year and as a result uh, you, you get you know, a cheaper rate per car wash. Um, the big that analogy falls apart a little bit because we don't make you pay ahead and the car wash would. <laughs> but other than that, it's a decent analogy. Uh, number five, will right size and recommendations support all operating system compute instance types, not just Linux, but Windows servers as well? Uh, yes, it supports all of the instances that we have. Um, I use it on mine, um, and it gives me recommendations. For some reason, for mine, it's always telling me to, to make them smaller. It never tells me to make them bigger. Maybe it's because I don't run that many popular websites. Hopefully, you, you do. Um, and it, it, it works on, on all of mine, um, Linux and Windows. Are there any more questions, guys? Okay. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, please stick around. Our next webinar is on streaming analytics. Very exciting. Sergey and team will be here to talk you through that. Uh, next month, also, we've got another uh, on-air webinar series 
for, by Google Cloud. Uh, it's on security and IT development tools. Okay, for now, thank you so much for your help.